Okay, welcome to my summer book haul. I got 21 books and I'm slowly being crushed by them. Hi guys, it's Mo from Mo and today we're doing my summer book haul. I have acquired a lot of books this summer because I have been on a reading spree. And naturally, I ended up on a book spree. Okay, let's start with the latest edition, my recent book haul. First one's up from Barnes & Noble is The Poppy Wars by R.F. Kung. Babel is about to come out and I really was like, I was supposed to read this before Babel came out. I still haven't read it. I need to just get on it. So here I am with Poppy Wars. I need to read it. Poppy Wars has a lot of hype. I'm really hoping it lives up to the hype. I'm ready for a story that's just gonna entice me, pull me out of this, I'm in like a mini reading slump. Let's hope that ends soon. Pretty much it says, Peasant, student, soldier, and goddess. I'm here for those vibes. So pretty much when I did this book haul, I got the first book in many popular series so that I can test it out to see how I like it. And I really am in annotate tabbing mood. So I'm probably gonna sit down and just like mark these up. I'm gonna practice my artistry and try to draw on the margins, which you'll see how that goes. I'm not the best artist, but I really wanna be. Next is Legendborn. I got this from Half Off Books. I was trying to do like a whole book spree at Half Off Books. And then when I arrived, it was pretty much cleaned out. And I was like, oh, well, most of the books are gone. This is awkward. So this is one of the few books I could actually get. It's Legendborn by Tracy Dion. And this is a really popular. A lot of people like it. Blood, I want to say it's Blood 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 i see i you know i don't know the name of the next book but that one's about to come out soon if it's not already out and i still haven't read this one yet and i just really want to read it it is described to be southern black girl magic and i'm here i'm here for it, it even has like a little board on it so i have high expectations and i think this is going to be a king arthur or the legends of the round table retelling as long as well as a fantasy romance so you guys know me and my retellings. I think it is. I'm not entirely sure. A lot of these books, I'm going into it kind of blind. Next is She Who Became the Sun. I got this from Barnes & Noble. It's by Shelley Parker Chan. And I really wanted to read this like last year. I think this is a women loving women book. So I'm here for the sapphic vibes. If that is it. I'm not entirely sure though. I am going into kind of blind. I remembered what it was about like probably a year ago. But now I don't remember what it's about and this has no synopsis. It only has praise on the back of the book. So I still don't know what it's about, but you know what? It's okay. I'm here for a sapphic tale. If it is sapphic, it might not be sapphic actually. Oh well. Next on the list is Inheritance Games by Jennifer L. Barnes. This was really popular. A lot of people said it was one of their favorite books of 2021, so I really wanted to read it. And now I'm finally reading it and I hope I enjoy it. It's for my book pick of July. So I have a little book club with one of my really good friends and it's kind of like a tentative book club. We're not really like hardcore about it yet, but if it ever becomes hardcore, I would love to share it with you all. This is our Jul- no, this is our August pick. Our July pick is Gilded Wolves. Momentary mistake. But this is the next book I got from Barnes & Noble. I really wanted to, like I said, tab and annotate books. This is, um, this is about Avery and she pretty much is just focusing on just getting through high school and getting a scholarship to get out of her town but her billionaire uncle passes away and leaves her with like a lot of money like bags on bags and she has to move to this mansion and it has riddles and codes and secret passageways but the house is still occupied by the family that was disinherited sounds like a family drama and all those disinherited children are like we expected to inherit the billions why do you get it? And one of the sons are like, we're convinced Avery's a con woman. And he's determined to get her to take her down. I am assuming this is going to be the love interest. It's gonna be enemies to lovers, I think. I don't know. So Avery just got into some big banks. So we shall see how her life goes. I'm excited to read this. I'll probably end up reading it in August as well. The next book on this haul that I actually already read as soon as I got it is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So everyone says, read The Cruel Prince, read The Cruel Prince, read The Cruel Prince. I really didn't know anything about it besides the fact that it had Faye in it. I I really liked it. I gave it four stars-ish. I don't think it lived up to the hype for me, but I am considering a reread. And I'm still thinking about it to this day. And I read all three books in the trilogy. So maybe I like it more than I think I liked it. And maybe I read it too quickly because when I was reading this, I read pretty much as like a three-day binge read. 
and it was crazy like I didn't sleep well the night so the other night I only slept like two hours so that could have influenced my review but I didn't know this was a bully romance like a legitimate bully romance like they were drop dead cruel to this girl it was still a fun ride I enjoyed it I'm considering reading another Faye book soon and that is my last Barnes & Noble book haul part next is Can We Cannot Communicate I love this Netflix show I am super into it. I really love everything about it. The editing, the style, the storyline, the characters. It's just amazing. I cannot get over it. So I had to get the first novel. I probably will maybe end up getting the entire series. I don't know. I haven't really read much manga, honestly. So I would have to really get into manga to see if I want to buy the rest of the collection, but I got the first book. Next is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And I hauled this book because I did it as a book club. This was my first book pick with my friend. We started a book club together and this was the book she picked out for the book club. I did read it. It was about a four star book. I actually do plan on hauling it. I got this in like June. I read it in June and I was like, okay, I got it. I got the story. I don't think I need to keep it though. But I really liked it. It pretty much gave me Day in the Life of Pilot Student. The ending was really good. The writing was pretty nice, but it wasn't anything magical it wasn't it wasn't worth the hype honestly but i got it and i actually plan on unhauling it but this is one of my recent summer books that i bought for the summer next is tokyo ever after my book club friend actually brought me this book as well as mermaid moon because she thought that i would really enjoy both of them so that's how i acquired them i really look forward to reading this this looks super fancy like mermaid moon i love mermaids and we have some teal edges and it's just it's calling to me i'm about to read you soon honey i'm ready for it and i hope it's a fantasy romance because i need it i think this is a contemporary book so i'm curious about it but since she likes it i'm willing to give it a try and read it and oh this one's actually signed i did not expect that but I've heard a lot of good things about Tokyo Ever After overall. I think the sequel's already out, Tokyo Dreaming. I think, I don't know. But I think it's a green cover and this one's tealy bluey. And I'm just looking forward to reading this. I really like it so far and those are my two books that my friend got me. Next in this book haul is the entire Shadow Me series without the novellas. Uh, I should have read Shadow Me 10 years ago, but I didn't. But I did now. I did it this past june may may june-ish and it was amazing i got these books in the summertime because i've been meaning to read shatter me forever and now they're coming out with the exclusive edition i'm so happy i bought the exclusive fairy loot edition with the novellas and i'm ready for it to come to my house <sighs> shatter me was not as good as ignite me and it unravel me these are the two of my favorite books of the series and the other three are kind of just watered down part of the plot just read them for the juliet warner moments but it's really these two that you come for. It's really those two. And Charity is it's more like a... It's okay. It's like a four-star book. But the other one's good. I'm so happy I have these in my collection. I tabbed them up. I wrote in them. I think they're so adorable. I still don't like the eye covers. Like, I don't, I don't like eyes on things. They just... They're not for me. But I did tab them. So... Yes, I'm very happy about that. And they are worthy of my shelves. They have become a favorite series of mine. For those who don't know, Shatter Me is pretty much this girl named Juliet, and she is living in an insane asylum because her touch is literally lethal, and her universe is like a dystopian universe that's under military rule, and there's the ecosystem is kind of like just horrible now there's no birds in the sky they can't grow food yada 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 and they're in a military room by the free establishment and pretty much they are breaking her out of the asylum because they want to use her as a weapon to torture people and this is her story of finding herself finding love and saving the world superhero style by the way the cruel prince totally falls under so you guys know how i say that like akatar these hollow vows and from blood and ash all fall under trash reality tv with Faye, because like typically there's not because typically there's not a plot um the characters are really interesting and dramatic and we just all don't always know what's happening and the writing isn't always there but it's always guaranteed to be entertaining and like have fun like a fun read so i actually feel like the crow prince isn't like that but i still feel like the fans of akatar from blood and ash and these hall of owls would still enjoy the books even though 
I feel like the plot is better in these books. I still feel like people would enjoy this type of storyline as well. Like it's a bully romance, it has Faye. It's not steamy as steamy as like all those other books, but it's still a good alternative. And it's just a fun read. It's a fun moment, it's a fun time, but I do prefer the writing style and the plot more for these books. I do wish we got more of Cardamon though. Cardin? Cardin though? Because I just feel like we didn't get enough with them. I feel like the book should have been longer. I feel like there's so much more we could have done with them. Honestly, I would rewrite the entire Cruel Prince series to be honestly better for me. But that's near here or there. I enjoyed the series stuff. I'm contemplating getting the other two books in the series and just doing a reread of them. I don't know if we're on that level yet. These next books are from Bung Boxes. So the first one is Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. This is a gorgeous cover, like the gold embossing, the sprayed edges. It's decadent, it's beautiful. I started reading it last night. It's definitely giving me Pixar Disney princess vibes off right off the bat. And it has twins, so my last book that had twins was The Curl Prince, and I realized it's difficult for me to imagine twins in my mind while reading. I don't know why, maybe I haven't read enough twin novels, but I keep confusing what they look like in my mind. Even though they look the same, they have very different characteristics of how like they show facial expressions, they dress, they act, so I'm, I keep confusing them in my mind. But I found that odd in The Curl Prince, I was like, why is my mind not picking up on twin? On twins like chill so I'm excited for my next twin novel it is one throne two crowns two princesses I think this is a fantasy romance and these twins are pretty much fighting for the crown one twin is a was raised by the witches who is the enemy of the current Queen's kingdom and she's coming to throw her off the throne and take it from her so this is that story and I think there's gonna be a fantasy romance in it somewhere and I'm just I'm ready for it I'm here for it my heart is prepared I need fantasy romance in my life the next book is Blood Scion and I actually ended up DNFing this book I got it in one of my recent book, book boxes but it's actually really dark and gritty and there is a disclaimer I will read you guys the disclaimer this book is inspired by the real life horrors endured by child by child soldiers and the war on children in particular and therefore tackles themes of war violence sexual assault please read with care so before I started this I did not know that and then when I started it I read it and I was like okay well let's see how far you can go into this book I made it pretty far I made it like three-fourths through the book but I wanted to DNF it like at the beginning of the book. I do not really feel like reading about the atrocities done to children right now. So I do enough to it. I say take time to emotionally prepare for this. I should have taken time to emotionally prepare for it. And even that, so if you still feel the need to DNF a book after emotionally preparing for it, that's fine. Protect your mental health. So I recently hauled this book, but I will recently be unhauling it soon because I do not plan on finishing it anytime soon nor do I feel like I need the physical copy to finish it I feel like it's not it's not gonna become one of my favorite books I do like the story the world building and everything but I'm not gonna like reread it over and over again so I probably will if I do re if I do plan on finishing it I'll just get the copy from the library or listen to an audiobook or something the next book that came in a book box was a book of night by Holly Black this was one of her first this is her first adult novel and a lot of people were really hyped for it but a lot of people I know wasn't really deeply into the story after they read it and because of that I decided not to even read it and probably just unhaul it to y'all because I I like Holly Black don't get me wrong like I read Tide and Valiant and all the other ones they were okay they were good but I don't feel like it's a necessary reread for me even like the cruel prince i like the cruel prince it's good and everything but not hitting the metrics it needs to hit for me to want to read this book so i did not read it at all and i just plan on unhauling it i hope when you guys enjoyed it i hauled it through a book box i think this was the limbocrate book box so i'll be unhauling it soon next is the stardust thief by chelsea abdullah so 
I only read like the first two pages of this and I do like it. I'm just not there yet. It's, it is on my TBR for July, so hopefully I can finish it this month, but it's supposed to be a retelling of a 1,010 nights. 1,001 nights, and you guys know how I am for my retellings, so I'm excited to read this. I am going into it kind of dark, so I'm not going to let you guys know exactly what it's about because I feel like I already forgot what it was about, and I'm happy about that because I do want to be a little blind entering this. It's so pretty with its lilac pages. And last but not least, this Vicious Grace. So this is the last book I got from a book box this month and I'm excited to read this. I actually think this is a fantasy romance and I'm going into it kind of blind, but I'll read you the back little blurb. Three weddings, three funerals, one chance to save them all. I think this is a fantasy romance. I want to go into it blind so I will not be reading the synopsis, but this is the last book on my haul for, the for summer. And I'm excited for all of these reads. I love reading in the summertime because I feel like I can binge easier in the summertime because the sun is out for so much longer. So I accidentally end up reading for way longer times at night. It's just fun. I like it. I'm here for the moments and the vibes. And that is my summer book haul. I wonder what are you guys reading this summer? My books, honestly, for me, do not have to be summer books to read in summer. Some of them, like here or there, I'll save just to read in summer, but typically I am a mood reader, so I just pick up the books when I want to read them and I just experience it then. I just want to read good books all year round. I do want to read Christmassy books around Christmas time because. I am a very big like huga fall Christmas type gal. I feel like those are like my seasons. So when they come around, I'm just like, let's go. I'm here for you. But I feel like the same way, honestly, with, with spring and summer as well. Like summer's my birthday. It's like sunny outside. I need sunshine. I am essentially a plant. I need sunshine. Spring is when all the flowers come out. I love photography. I love flower photography. I love dancing in flowers and doing photography. I like the changing of the seasons. I just like having all four seasons. I'm just one of those people. I grew up in Florida. I only had one season and that was summer or just rain. Summer or rain. That's pretty much my seasons. And now that I'm not in Florida anymore, I'm in Washington and I have all four seasons and I adore it. When my mom comes to visit, she has such a blast. Like watching the colors change and seeing the cherry blossoms and being in cold weather it's like an adventure for us we're kind of like tourists but it's fine we enjoy it and that was a super long spiel about even though i buy books in summertime it doesn't necessarily mean that i have to read them in summertime nor are they summer themed so read whatever you guys want to read in the summertime have a reading remember i'm here every friday be sure to subscribe and actually i'm on instagram bookstagram and TikTok now. Follow me on those, my new socials. I have no idea exactly when I post on there yet, but I will be posting. Happy reading, y'all. Bye.